I wonder what the weather's gonna be like today. Hot, I hope. Mm, maybe you should check the forecast. What's happening guys? It's super sunny outside, but will it always be? In this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can forecast the weather using a time series package called Neural Profit. Let's take a deeper look as to what we're going to be going through. Right, so in this walkthrough, we're gonna be going through a couple of key things, but specifically by the end of this video, you should be able to predict the temperature using the Neural Profit package. So first up, we're gonna start out by pre-processing our data and loading it up. So we'll be using a Kaggle data set for this. We'll then train a time series forecasting model using Neural Profit. So this is actually a library that's been built on top of ARNet and Facebook's Profit package. Then what we're going to do is we're going to forecast the temperature into the future using our trained model. Now let's take a deeper look as to how this is all going to fit together. So first up, we're going to start out by reading in our data set into a Jupyter Notebook using Pandas. We're then going to do a little bit of pre-processing. Specifically, you'll see that in the data that we're going to be working with, there's a missing segment of data. So we'll take a look at how we can handle that. Then what we'll do is we'll fit our neural network model specifically using neural profit, and then we'll be able to forecast into future periods. So this will allow us to forecast the temperature out into the future. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty, so in order to go on ahead and predict the weather, we're gonna need to do five key things. So specifically, we first up need to install and import our dependencies. So this is largely the neural profit package. Then we need to read in our data and process our dates, and I'll show you where to get the data from. We'll then train our model, forecast, and then save our model down so we can use it again later on. Now, the data set that we're specifically going to be using is this rain in Australia data set, but we're specifically going to be predicting the temperature. So there's a column in here called temperature at 3 p.m., and that's going to be the feature that we aim to predict. Now, another thing to note is that you can get all of this code pre-written, so including the Jupyter Notebook and the data set from my GitHub page. So if you go to Nick Knock Knack Forecasting Weather with Neural Profit, you'll be able to pick this up and run with it. But in this video, we're gonna go through it step by step. So first up, let's go on ahead and install our core dependency, which is going to be Neural Profit. Alrighty, and that's Neural Profit installed. So in order to do that, we've written exclamation mark, pip, install Neural Profit. And you can see it's gone on ahead and installed it. Now, the next thing that we need to do is actually go on ahead and import some key dependencies. So the specific dependencies that we're going to need are pandas, neural profit, matplotlib for a little bit of plotting. And we're also going to import pickle because that's what we'll use to save our model down to disk later on. So let's go on ahead and import those. Alrighty, so we've written four lines of code there and we've imported all of our dependencies. So the first import that we've done is for pandas. So to do that, we've written import pandas as pd. Then we've imported neural profit. So to do that, we've written from neural profit, import neural profit. So this is importing the neural profit class. Then we've imported matplotlib. So from matplotlib, import pyplot as plt. So this means whenever we refer to PLT will actually be referring to pyplot and matplotlib. And then we've imported pickles. So to do that, we've written import pickle. Now, the next thing that we need to do is actually go on ahead and import our data. So the data set that we're going to be using is this weatheroz.csv. So if we actually take a look at the preview, you can see that there's going to be a whole bunch of different columns that are really revolving around the weather. Uh, that's taken a little bit long. Let's just read it into our data frame instead. So let's go on ahead and read it in using pandas. Alrighty, and you can see that we've now got our temperature data. So in this particular case, what we've done is we've written pd.readcsv, and then to that we've passed through the name of our data set. So this is our data set here, so weather.oz or weatheroz.csv. And then we've stored that data inside of a data frame called df. And then in order to visualize the first five rows, we've just written df.head, so I'm pretty standard pandas functionality there. So if you're not too familiar with pandas, I highly recommend you check out the pandas in 20 minutes video. I'll include a link somewhere above. Check it out, it's really good. Now that we've imported our data, it's probably good to do a little bit of exploratory data analysis. So you can see that we've got a whole heap of different locations here, and it looks like we've got a number of columns. So let's take a look at those first. So let's take a look at all the different locations that we've got. All right, so you can see that we've got 
quite a number of different locations in our data set. So to get this unique uh, array, what we've done is rindf.location. So that's referring to this column here. So if I drop the unique, you can see that we're just pulling through that column. But by typing in unique, we're able to get all the unique values within that column. Now you can see that we've got quite a fair few. The one that I think that we'll probably do is Melbourne. So you can see that we've got a whole bunch of different locations. These are obviously Australian locations. We're just gonna pick one, so feel free to choose a different one if you want. Um, we'll pre-process this in a second to filter this out. So we're gonna probably do Melbourne. Uh, now the next thing to do is probably take a look at all the columns that we've got. So let's go on ahead and do that. All right, so we can take a look at our columns just by writing df.columns, and you can see that we've got a date column, location, minimum temperature, maximum temperature, rainfall, evaporation, sunshine, wind gust, wind gust speed, direction, a whole bunch of directions, uh, as well as wind speed, humidity, pressure, whether or not we've got cloud at 3 p.m. and 9 p.m., uh, a temperature, whether or not there's going to be rain today or rain tomorrow. Now in this particular case, we're going to be focused on the temperature. So we want to forecast the temperature going forward. And I think what we'll do is we'll forecast the temperature at 3 p.m., so towards the afternoon. Uh, so these are just things to note. So we're going to be doing Melbourne over here and we're going to be forecasting our temperature at 3 p.m. Now the next thing that we need to do is actually start doing a little bit of pre-processing. So we want to filter out and get our specific location. And then we also want to convert this date column to an actual date time. So if we actually look at our D types at the moment, so by typing in df.dtypes, you can see that our date is just an object. So it has no time properties, but we want to convert this to a date time object. So we'll do that in a sec as well. So let's go on ahead and start pre-processing our data set. So what we're going to do is convert our date column into a date time uh, type. And then what we're also going to do is we're going to filter out our data set and just pick out Melbourne. So remember, we're only going to forecast one location. So let's go ahead and do it. Alrighty, so we've now gone and filtered in our data set and we've converted it to a, and converted our date column to a date time. So if we just check our D types, uh, that doesn't look like, oh, hold on, we're doing it on the wrong data frame. Yep, cool, all right, so that's done. So what we've written there is we've written three lines of code. So the first one is we've gone and filtered out our data set and specifically grabbed out our Melbourne location. So to do that, we've grabbed our data frame, so our original data frame, which was DF, and then we've gone and applied a filter to it. So specifically what we're doing is we're grabbing that location column and we're only bringing back rows that have a location of Melbourne. And then we're storing this filtered data frame inside of a new data frame called MELB. So going forward, our core data set that we're going to be working with is going to be called MELB, so M-E-L-B. Then what we're doing is we're converting our date column. So specifically what we're doing there is we're grabbing our date, so MELB, and then we're passing through our date indexer. So this gives us our date column. And then we're using the pd.toDateTime method and we're passing through that date column. So this will take our date column, which is just an object, and convert it into a date time type. Then we're storing that or overriding the existing date column with that new date time type column. And then we're showing our first five rows using melb.head. So you can see that we've now got our first five rows there. And if we type in melb.dtypes, you can see that in fact, we've now got our date time or our date column converted to a date time type. So this is a requirement whenever you're actually working with neural profit, you need to pass through two columns. So the date time or a date column and then a value column, but we'll see this in a second. So now the next thing that we probably wanna do is a little bit of exploratory data analysis. So we haven't actually looked to see whether or not there's an actual pattern in terms of our temperature. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use matplotlib, which we imported up here, and we're actually going to plot out our temperature over time. So let's go on ahead and do that. Alrighty, so you can see that pretty clearly there's a bit of missing data here. So it looks like from 2015 to maybe mid 2016, it looks like we're missing some temperature data there. So we ideally want to make sure that we don't have missing values whenever we're passing our data to neural profit. So you can uh, impute certain missing values, but if you've got a large portion missing, then it makes things a little bit difficult. 
So rather, what we're going to do is we're just going to cut off our data set from 2015 and just use 2015 onwards or prior. So that will basically mean that everything after 2015 we cut off. So everything from here onwards is removed from our data set. So let's go on ahead and do that. Alrighty, and there you go. So we've now gone and filtered out our data set. So you can see that we now only have 2015 and prior. So in order to do that, we've done it in two steps. So first up, what we've done is we've created a new year column. So if I just go and type melb.head, you can see that we've now gone and extracted our year. So if we go and look at the tail bit, you should be able to see the bottom. So what we've first done is we've gone and grabbed our year from our date. So to do that, we've written melb and then passed through our date indexer. So this gives us our date column. And then we've gone and used the apply lambda sort of functionality to be able to go and extract our year. So we've written dot apply lambda x. So this loops through each value in the column and then we extract our year. So to do that, we've written x dot year. So this column here is basically looping through every single value in our date column and just grabbing the year. And then we're storing the results inside of a new column called year. And you can see that we've now stored it in a column called year over here. Then what we've gone and done is we've gone and applied a filter. So again, similar to what we did to filter out by our Melbourne location. So here we filtered by location and we grabbed Melbourne. Here what we're doing is we're filtering by our year. So what we're basically saying is that we don't want anything prior to the end of 2015. So this will capture everything prior to 2015, 2015 inclusive. And then we're filtering that out and we're basically grabbing every single column inside of our MELB data frame and we're overriding our existing MELB data frame with this filtered one. So you can see now that we don't actually have anything past 2015. Then what we're doing is we're reusing this visualization code that we had here. So we're using our matplotlib functionality to go and visualize our plot. And you can see that there that we in fact don't have anything after the end of 2015. Now, the next thing that we need to do is filter out a couple of our columns. So specifically, whenever we're passing our data to neural profit, it's expecting two columns and two columns only. It's expecting a column called DS, which stands for dates, and it's expecting another column called Y, which represents the value that we're trying to predict. So ideally, what we're going to do is set our date column to equal DS and set our temperature 3 p.m. equal to Y. And then we're going to get rid of all the other columns. So let's go on ahead and do that now. Alrighty, so that's our data filtered out. So you can see that now we've only got two columns. So DS, which is our dates, and Y, which represents our temperature at 3 p.m., also representing the values that we want to predict. So in order to do that, we've gone and filtered through our data frame. So specifically, we've grabbed our Melbourne data frame or our MELB data frame, and then we've passed through an array, which basically means that we're only going to return the columns in that array. So in this case, we've passed through date and temperature at 3 p.m., and we've stored that inside of a new variable called data. So this means our new data frame is just called data. So if we actually take a look by typing in data, you can see that this is now going to be the data frame that we pass to neural profit. Then what we've done is we've dropped any remaining NA values so, or any missing values. So to do that, we've written data.dropNA and then we've passed the in place equals true keyword parameter. This means it will apply it to our existing data frame. Then we've renamed our columns. So to do that, we've written data.columns and then we've passed through an array. So in this case, we've named our two columns, D, S, and Y. So they were previously called date and temp 3 p.m. We've just renamed them to D, S, and Y because this is what Neural Profit is going to expect. And then we've shown our last five or our top five rows using the data.head method. All right, so we've done quite a fair bit of pre-processing there. Now it's time to get going with Neural Profit. So first up, what we're going to do is create a new instance of our model and then use the fit method to go on ahead and train. So let's go on ahead and do that. All right, so before I run that, let's quickly run through what we've actually written there. So we've written two lines of code. So the first line is creating a new untrained Neural Profit model. So what we've done is we've used our Neural Profit class, which we imported right up here. So remember we imported from Neural Profit, import Neural Profit. So we've imported that. 
we've created a new instance of it. So by passing through parentheses at the end, and then we've stored that in a variable called m. So our model is effectively going to be stored in a variable called m. Then what we've done is we've written m.fit to actually go on ahead and train our model. Now to do that, we've passed through three parameters. So we've passed through the data frame that we wanna work on, which is this, the one that we just created up here. We've then set the frequency of our data frame as well. So in this case, our data frame is in a daily frequency. So you can see that it's got each day. And then we've specified how long we want to train for. So this uses ARNet in the background, which is a neural network that's particularly good for time series forecasting. So we're able to set our number of epochs. So in this case, I've just set it to 1,000. You might choose to train it for longer or for shorter, depending on what your accuracy looks like. But that's pretty much it. So we create our neural profit model and then we type in m.fit and this is going to go on ahead and train our model. So let's go on ahead and train it and we'll be right back. Alrighty, and that's our model done training. So you can see we ended up with a final mean absolute error of about three degrees. So this means that on average, our model is gonna be about three degrees plus or minus out or out from the actual value. Now that's not too bad given the fact that we trained pretty quickly and we don't exactly have a gigantic data set. So in terms of performance, this isn't too bad. Now that we've gone and trained our model so you can see that we get a whole bunch of operational metrics, we actually wanna go and forecast. So up until now, we've really just been doing pre-processing and training. We haven't actually gone and forecast. So let's go on ahead and now start forecasting. So first up, what we're going to do is we're going to make a future data frame and then we're going to use the predict method inside of our model to go on ahead and forecast forward. So let's do it. Alrighty, and that's our forecast created. So what we went and did is three key things. So first up, what we did is we created a data frame that had our forecast periods. In this case, we're forecasting for 900 periods. And to do that, we've written m.makeFutureDataFrame. We've passed through our existing data and this number of periods that we wanna forecast. This is stored inside of a variable called future. So if we take a look at that, you can see that we have our future data frame there. Then what we've gone and done next is we've used the model.predict method to go on ahead and predict our future periods. So to do that, what we've done is written m.predict and we've passed in our future data frame that we wrote up here. And we've stored that inside of a variable called forecast. And then once we've got our predictions, we've gone and viewed our top five rows using the forecast.head method. So if we actually take a look at forecast.tail, we'll see the last couple of periods that we've gone and forecasted. And you can see that we're now getting forecasts all the way out until 2017. So remember we cut off at 2015. So this is going to forecast 900 periods after the last date that we've got. If we wanted to, we could forecast way further into the future. So say we did uh, 1,200. And you can see we're now forecasting into 2018. So this is forecasting for 1,200 days. Now, what we can also do is we can actually plot these results out. So if we wanted to, we can type in m.plot and pass through our forecast and we'll get a plot. So let's try that. And there you go. So there's our forecast plot. So you can see that we've got dates as our x-axis and temperature as our y-axis. And you can see that over time, it's kind of mimicking that same pattern that we had up here. So you can see that during the middle of the year, we have lower temperatures and that's when we have winter in Australia. And towards the end of the year, we have higher temperatures. So that represents our summer. Now, what we can also do is we can actually break down the components that represent this particular time series forecast. So we can actually see the seasonality across months and across different years. So let's do that. Oh, before we do that, in order to generate this plot, we've written m.plot and then we've passed through our forecast data frame and we've stored that inside of a variable called plot1. To generate the component plot, what we're going to do is write m dot plot components so plot underscore components and then again pass through our forecast data frame and we'll store that inside of a variable called plot2 so if we run that you can see we now have our component plots so this is going to show you the overall trend so that's that first chart that you can see there so overall it looks like that temperatures are increasing and you can see that that's represented in this time series forecast here so in 2015 our max that we hit was around 27 degrees in 2018, our max that we hit is probably around 30 degrees or 29 degrees there. And you can see that that's represented in this trend graph here. 
Now we can also see the yearly seasonality. So in this case, you can see that during our summer, so January, you can see that we have higher temperatures. And then as we head towards winter, we have lower temperatures in July. And again, it starts to ramp back up as we head towards summer. And then it looks like we have a little bit of seasonality on day of the week, but that's not particularly strong there as you, you wouldn't expect. There probably isn't too much seasonality within a particular week. But that about wraps up how to actually generate these forecasts. So we've now gone and used the make future data frame to go and create our future data frame. And then we've used the predict function to go on ahead and predict. And then you can see that you can really easily plot out what these forecasts look like using the m.plot function and m.plot components if you want to see the different components of trend. Now, the last thing that I want to go through is quickly take a look at how we can save this model down so that we can use it later on. Say, for example, we wanted to generate a new forecast later, we could do this. So what we're going to be doing here is using the pickle.dump method to dump this to disk so we'll be able to pick up our model. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, so that's our model now saved. Now what we've written there is with, and then we've gone and created a new file called forecastmodel.pickle. So in order to do that, we've written open forecastmodel.pickle. So this is gonna be the name of the file. And then to our open statement, we've passed through WB. So this means write binary. Then we've stated that we wanna work with this file as F. So this means that we're going to be working with it as F. And then to dump it down, we've written pickle.dump and then M, which is our model that we actually wanna dump. So that's our neural profit model. And then we've specified that we're going to dump it out as this particular file here. So forecastmodel.pickle. So some pretty standard uh, pickle dumping functionality or what you typically do for a scikit-learn model as well. Now you can see that our model is now saved. So if we take a look, we can see that we do in fact have forecast underscore model.pickle inside the same file that our notebook is in. Now, if we wanted to, we could actually delete our model and then reload it. So in order to reload it, we can pretty much copy this line here. And then we just need to change a few key things. So first up, we're going to set, instead of having write binary, we want read binary. And then rather than using pickle.dump, we're going to use pickle.load and remove the M. So what we're basically saying here is that we're going to be opening up this file as F, and then we're going to use pickle.load to load F and then store it inside of M. So we're basically reinitializing our model. And if we take a look now, we have in fact loaded up our model. And just to prove to, to you that this works, if we type in, del or if we delete our model again, you can see that we've now deleted it. And if we reload, we've now reloaded our model. Now, if we wanted to, we can go and copy our forecasting code, which we had up here, paste it down here. And then we can go and add, say we wanted to forecast a 12,000 days. We can go and generate that forecast. And again, go and plot it out by copying this code. And you can see we've gone and forecasted way out all the way until 2049. So that about wraps it up. So we've gone and done quite a fair bit. So we've imported our dependencies as well as installing your profit. We pre-processed our data as well as plotting it out while we were doing that. We then went and trained our model using the neural profit library and using the fit method. And then last but not least is we went and generated some forecasts. We saved our model to disk, reloaded it, and then went and generated a new forecast. And that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and tick that bell so you get notified of when I release future videos. And let me know what other types of things you'd like to forecast using Neural Profit. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.